To put the question in Butler's terms, why do state responses risk greater precarity for children whose vulnerability has already been exploited? Why don't we have responses that make children safer, even overwhelmingly safer? Right? That should be our goal, I think, is to make children overwhelmingly safer. Part of the reason for this situation, or according to Generation 5, is the fact that even when the state is called upon, it is rarely successful at redressing violence. Generation 5 presents Pragmatic reasons for this inefficacy, lack of evidence, children upon realizing what will happen, like that they'll be taken away or that a parent will be imprisoned, revoke statements, and removal of children from a violent home can be a removal to a home or institution that's equally violent. Importantly, Generation 5 also offers a systematic analysis of state responses, observing that these responses are not intended to address uh, what caused the violence. As they write, quote, these systems are not built with the intention to prevent violence or transform those immediately impacted. The community conditions in which abuse occurs are societal conditions that allow and are perpetuated uh, by child sexual abuse. On the contrary, these systems serve to maintain such conditions and often collude with violence." End quote. In other words, state violence, including that wielded by state agenc agencies charged with responding to child sexual abuse, is part of the system that is part of the system that perpetuates child sexual abuse on gener Generation 5's analysis. With its focus on the victim-perpetrator bi binary, in which conviction is the mark of success, state systems do not comprehend the complexity of sexual violence to which Butler's analysis of precarity directs us and which has guided Generation 5's work. Moreover, Generation 5 emphasizes that communities are highly resistant to using state systems. Our one recent highly publicized case underscores this point. In his report on the Penn State child sex abuse cover-up, are you all familiar with Jerry Sandusky? And okay, so some of you are, some of you aren't. Well, Louis Free wrote this report um, of everything that went down at Penn State, and one of he quotes one of the school officials involved in deciding not to contact the P Department of Public Welfare after receiving reports from several witnesses who saw Jerry S Sandusky abusing children. The official wrote of the school's plan to report Sandusky instead to the executive board of the charity he had started and to ban him from Penn State athletic facilities that this approach, quote, is humane and a reasonable way to proceed, end quote. We can see in this line of thinking not only a total inability to see the situation from the point of the children abused, but also a concern that involving the state would be both inhumane and unreasonable. Deciding to protect an abuser is often a decision made either implicitly or explicitly not to invite the potentially decimating force of the state into a family, a church, a university program, or a charity. Generation 5 shows us that the state of affairs need not be the case, but responding to sexual abuse and assault in ways that will eliminate them requires building the capacity of communities to respond differently. As part of that capacity building, Generation 5 offers a multi-layered conception of safety, and this, I think, is really rich and really valuable. Quote, we understand safety is liberation from violence, exploitation, and the threat of future acts of violence. The safety that we seek manif manifests on three intersection, intersecting and mutually reinforcing levels. On an individual level, a survivor's safety from immediate violence and the threat of further acts of violence, sexual, economic, etc., is central. For the community, safety comes from fostering community norms and practices which challenge violence, and support conditions for liberation. Lastly, across communities and collectivities, safety means mutual accountability, challenging power dynamics within and between groups, guarding against backlash, and building strong alliances so that we can collectively support and protect each other from interferences and targeting by the state." End quote. So that was all their definition, those three intersecting levels of safety. Generations 5 goal is to end child sexual abuse, but they caution only, quote, only a compassionate accountability that challenges the dehumanization of people who sexually abuse children can create the conditions for longer-term safety, end quote. No aspect of safety can be secured by the denial of safety to anyone, including people who sexually abuse children. In other words, if safety is the goal, no one's vulnerability can be exploited to the point of precarity. To be clear, in its rejection of the state, including incarceration of those who have abused children, Generation 5 has not lost sight of the fact that perpetrators are often not the most vul vulnerable members of a community. But they, have also, uh, but they have also seen that the current structures of response compound victim-survivor vulnerability. And further, that exploiting the vulnerability of those who have harmed will not contribute to victim-survivor safety or help to prevent future abuse and assault. 
Thus, they have developed a complex view of safety that includes the safety and well-being of those who have committed harm. While generations five, Generation 5 uh, does not work on a model of eliminative revenge, we might worry that they operate with a narcissistic fantasy of control, right? That they can change what's going on in their communities. Butler well describes such a narcissistic response to violence, quote, I or we have brought this violence upon ourselves and thus to account for it by recourse to our deeds as if we believed in their omnipotence, believed that our own deeds are the cause of all possible effects. Indeed, guilt of this sort exacerbates our sense of omnipotence, sometimes under the very sign of its critique, end quote. Butler rightly cautions us that the critique of violence and revenge can sometimes be a narcissistic investment in one's ability to control what happens, right? So if I brought this on myself, then I can make it never happen again. I'm in control here. If Generation 5 is making the narcissistic, narcissistic claim that communities bring the injury upon themselves, then they evade the critical exposure of injury that Levinas and Butler theorize and seek a different path to achieve the impossible mastery of injury po uh, promised by revenge. So this is like the same coin, it's the other side of the revenge coin, is the narcissistic fantasy of control, is the other side of that coin. In their statement of principles, for instance, we might worry about the following. They say, quote, the conditions that allow violence to occur must be transformed in order to achieve justice in individual instances of violence, end quote. One reading of this imperative is that Generation 5 theorizes child sexual abuse is something the community has brought on itself and can expiate through its own deeds. Generation 5 gives much evidence, though, that this is not the intent of their claim. In their very next principle, they point to the failure of state and systematic responses to child sexual abuse. Right? So they're looking at this larger system that they are not in control of. Uh, Generation 5 neither claims responsibility for nor completely separates themselves from these responses. So they say, these are our responses, but we're not in control of them. We belong to the state, but we're not in control of the state. Rather, I argue, they have produced and are producing a critique of the conditions of their own existence. Butler writes, quote, critique is not merely uh, of a given social practice or a certain horizon, horizon of intelligibility within which practices and institutions appear. It also appears that I come into question for myself. So when we question our social ontology, when we question the structures that structure our life, we're not just calling into question other people, we're calling ourselves into question, right? Because that, that's the context in which we were made. That's where we came to be the people that we are. The self-questioning follows from, oh, yeah, we are constituted by the critiques we, we by the norms we critique. We are made even as we are controlled uh, by the norms that we call into question. We live recognizable lives insofar as we do live recognizable lives, um, insofar as we, sorry, this is a complex sentence, <laughs> it's not a great sentence. We live recognizable lives insofar as we do so, insofar as we live lives that are recognizable according to the norms of our social context. Okay, so if we live recognizable lives, it's because the people around us recognize our lives. They think our lives are valuable. We think our lives are valuable because of responses we get from other people. It's central to recognizable lives. And as Generation 5 well warns, calling into question those norms can be risky. Yet not taking sh such risks helps perpetuate the current state of affairs. So, and now my conclusion. Neither Generation 5 nor Butler can give us a new concept of safety that will master all our vulnerability and eliminate all threats. So nobody can give us absolute safety. Indeed, as theorists, they argue that such dreams contribute to the uneven and exploitative dis distribution of vulnerability that contributes to greater levels of unsafety for all members of the community. These theorists can help us to dream new dreams, however. Butler writes, quote, struggle against violence is, one might say, to mobilize aggression in the service of that struggle. So to take that impulse for revenge, to take that impulse to settle the score and put it in the service of not perpetuating violence. It is to shift the aim of aggression from violence to struggle, a change that means committing oneself to being addressed by those whose lives make a claim upon us. To do this, there must be a critical intervention in those norms that differentially produce whose life, is whose life is counted as a life at all. For this purpose, we do not need to know in advance what a life will be, but only to find and support those modes of representation and appearance that allow the claim of life to be made and heard. And that's the end of that Butler quote. The challenge of generations five, Generation 5's work is their contention that children and those who abuse them make a claim upon us. Further, it is not a claim to which the state, at least the current one, can respond. Pocket parks refuse the claim, not just of those convicted of sexual offenses, but of the people who have been abused and assaulted. 
We do not have to wonder what the consequences of such refusal will be. They are all around us. We're living in that world. But neither do we have to begin the work of inventing alternative responses. Generation 5 has begun imagining and practicing responses to violence that increase the safety for all members of the community in which violence occurs. We cannot eliminate our vulnerability, but Generation 5 helps us to be guided by that knowledge rather than by its denial, by knowing that we will remain vulnerable to one another. In so doing, they show us new paths to safety. Thanks very much. <laughs>